Hey, what's up guys? This is going to be part three of my Beofang series videos. And this is again the UV5RA model, also referred to as the UV5RAX+. Now just a little note about the Baofangs is that regardless of which one you purchase aside, uh, of the UV5 models, they're all pretty much the same hardware-wise. They have some different firmware, but the firmware doesn't change things that tremendously. So I wouldn't worry too much about getting the latest and greatest at all times because the firmware is not flashable. So that's something I learned a bit later, but it doesn't change my opinion on the radio really at all or affect my review that I'm going to tell you about right now. So if you want, go ahead and click the links for the first two videos. The first video is an unboxing. It covers what's in the radio, and I quickly kind of run through its operation. The second video is the programming video, which uh, is the utilization of this uh, programming cable. Now, my video is for a Mac computer, but it works pretty much the same on Windows. In fact, it works easier on Windows. The Mac, you have an extra step, but once you get the uh, application running, it's very straightforward. So what you're looking at is my uh, kit for the Baofeng and what I consider to be the base level of things that you're going to want to have. There are some modifications to this, some things that I'm thinking about adding. I'm actually thinking about getting another radio, not this model, the uh, first, I guess you could say the first model that came out. And I'll briefly explain why in a second, but let me cover what's on the table. So you have the radio, which is $32.96 on Amazon. I also have a dual band antenna. This is a uh, Nagoya NA701 dual band antenna. It's 955 on Amazon. I'll put the links of all these in my uh, Amazon store and I'll put the link in the description. You don't have to buy it through the, my store. I do get a cut. It doesn't change the price at all to you, but uh, the reason I put it there is it's very easy for me to organize. Again, you, there's no pressure to buy there, so don't worry about that. The antenna is, like I said, 955. This comes with the radio. What's not pictured here is the cradle because I just don't have the space for it. There's a battery tray for three trip, uh, six AAA batteries. I also have this little battery caddy. This is not something you need to purchase, but it'll be on there as well. This is 690 uh, at, on eBay. I couldn't find it on Amazon, so you're going to have to buy it on eBay. And then lastly is the programming cable, which is $7.27. With all this combined, that's $56.68. The one thing that I could recommend if you are so interested is an extended battery. Now, there are other videos on YouTube that, that covers the modification of the extended battery for the UV5RA if you really like this model. If you don't care so much, then just get the standard UV5R model. That accepts the extended battery without any modification. Otherwise, what you'll have to do is Dremel out some of the bottom little nubs here uh, that are on the radio, on the extended battery. You don't have to modify the radio, you have to modify the extended battery. A, s a note about the extended battery before you go and buy it as well. A lot of people note that there is an AC adapter port on the battery. That port does not accept the battery, or I'm sorry, does not accept the cable that comes with the radio for the docking station. So keep that in mind before you go off and purchase the extended battery thinking that it'll plug in directly because a lot of people want that. You have to get a special charger, a separate charger for that. That's good and bad, but hey, just so you know, it's covered. So let The first thing that I really like is obviously the price. With everything I mentioned in this, what you're looking at right now, it's, it comes to $56.68. That's an incredible value. You get a great or a decent antenna, a programming cable. It comes with the audio headset. You don't need that extended mic. If you want it, that's also a good buy. I don't personally use it that much, so I didn't include it in this. I don't think it's part of the base kit. And then you get this backup battery set. This is a really nice thing to have just as is. You know, you take this right here. It closes in the front like so. I'm sorry, I've got it the other way. It locks into place. And you can put this in a bag leave the batteries separate so they're not connected even though it's not going to drain the batteries but I just like to keep them in these little caddies and you can leave that in a bag and you can use your your charged batteries and then if you get into any kind of situation you can switch over to the AAA's. Extremely versatile, really good value in that sense. 
The controls feel really good on this radio. The button, the push to talk, the monitor, the call button. Uh, the flashlight's a little lame, but it's there, it's an option. I like the switch between the uh, frequency mode and the channel mode. I like the little activity light. I like the AB, I like the band. It all feels relatively good. The buttons are squishy, but not too uh, flimsy that you feel like you're gonna break them. You know what I mean? Now, I like the way the battery connects in. There's a little push button on top here. Push it down, the battery slides. And it's got a real positive lock-in, feels good. The clip's decent. You have to do it yourself with two Phillips head screwdrivers that come with the kit, but hey, it's no big deal. This uh, little dial here is what turns the radio on. And I like the feel of it. Frequency mode. Another positive thing is that menu voice. I like the English. This, I like the English on it. I think it's pretty good. The only thing that's a little dumb is when you hit the search button and the scan button. It uh, it kind of has broken English. I'll, I'll show you what that sounds like right now. Frequency mode. Scanning begin. It's not saying scanning beacon, it's saying scanning begin. So that's kind of a funky thing, but no big deal. It doesn't take away from the value. The size is pretty decent. Um, with all things considered, I showed this in another video. If you take off the pocket clip, this fits perfectly into a waterproof uh, Pelican case that I use for radios and whatnot. And when you put the antenna right next to it, it really does get small. The closest thing that I have that is of a similar size is my Yaesu FT60R, which I'll show you right now. You can see side by side the FT60 is just a lot bigger radio, and it's much heavier too. So I really do like the Baofeng for that purpose. It's really portable, it's very easy to carry with you, it doesn't take up a lot of space in a pocket, it completely disappears in a backpack because it's just very little weight to it. The LED screen, as far as the activity, both for um, the push to talk and the receive. Let me find a channel that's receiving. Scanning begin. I'll let it scan. When it's operating on, it's got this little purple screen. And this is adjustable. You can change it within the menu. You've got three colors to work with. You have a red, a very bright, vibrant blue, and then a purple color. Um, I found that the uh, red I like the best for when I'm transmitting and that, I'll show you what that looks like. Let me stop this. I'll monitor here. I'm actually not on a receiver, it's just in an open frequency and I will hit the red. Cool color. I like it. <laughs> kind of more of an orange color. So the negatives I find for the radio, the largest is programming. Programming manually is very, very difficult. The reason why I made that second video in the hopes that anybody that purchased it wouldn't get discouraged, I wanted to show them immediately how to program it with the data cable to get working with the radio immediately because it is a very, very big pain in the butt. <laughs> so I'm going to make a follow-on video to this one, a fourth video to show you exactly how to manually program. I'll take a whole lot of time to show you how to do simplex, uh, dual, and then set up a repeater, set up a memory channel, be able to do the tones, and all that good stuff that goes along with it. Real quickly, there's some things you have to understand. A repeater usually has a receive and then a transmit frequency. They're different. That allows it to transmit what it hears at the same time that it's hearing it, kind of so to speak. And there's a tone that goes along with it, and that's an auto squelch tone. Most of the stuff is published online, so I'll show you in that video. You just hang on to that for now. In the meantime, go look at the second video, use the data cable. Believe me, it is $7.25 well spent because you will pull your hair out. There's 127 channels on this radio and manually programming 127 channels, I think, I, I think I'd throw it in a lake before I would do that. Now, what is the second thing I don't like? It's um, the search or the scan functionality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch around here. I'm gonna get a better angle on the, uh, the radios and I'm gonna compare it to the Yesu as far as how quickly they search uh, against each other. So here are the two radios side by side. The scan button on the bow fangs here on the right. The scan button on the Yesu is also on the right, these up and down arrows. You select up, it scans up. You select down, it scans down. Very useful function. Had they done that here on the up and left arrow, I'd probably like it a little bit more, but let me get it started. 
you're going to notice the ASU is much faster both in getting into the scan mode and scanning through channels. Okay, I'm in scan channel mode here. So I'm in channel mode, not frequency. I'm also in channel mode here. You can see the numbers on the right. That's the Baofeng moving through the numbers. Notice how the Yesu is jumping through very, very quickly. It stops for a little bit when it finds a signal, and then it just flies through them. Now, a bit of different operation here. When you find a channel you want to monitor, you hit the monitor button, and it stops scanning. With the Yesu, all you do is hit the, mon the, the, P the PTT button, and it stops. My last issue with the Baofeng versus the Yesu, this is just something I'm used to. See how I'm in this alpha mode? That's the channel that I'm, I'm currently on. Alert, Clara. Some of them have numbers, some of them don't. Bear, Keller, the actual uh, station name. And when it scans, it's very useful because it, it jumps through and stops that's a very popular uh, repeater right there, the Win system, Win OC, just to tell me that it's the OC repeater. This is a very useful function. Uh, to be able to go from the channel name into the frequency, all you do is you hit band, and now it tells you it's 448.060. Very easy. You just push that band button. The Baofeng doesn't have that functionality. What the Baofeng does is, you get the channel, we're in channel mode right now. Let me turn the volume up. Seven, six. That's the channel number. Seven, five. So if I wanted to go to, say, zero, zero, 001, zero, zero, one. this bottom button, this bottom comes out here. Okay? One, two, seven. Now I just jump through to one, the, the top number. One. You might be noticing a trend. The frequencies are only displaying. It doesn't display the uh, the actual name. If you want to display the name, you have to go into menu. One. I'm sorry, menu. menu. Scroll through the menu. Okay. See how it says MDF A, MDF B? Well, I'm on B right now, so I'll hit menu, name, channel, frequency, name, I'll hit name. Confirm. Hit exit. Now it says shorty. Six. Now it's the name of the station. Five. Stations. Four, three. Knots. Two, that's Knott's Berry Farm. Two. That's Disneyland. Let's see if we can hit Disneyland. Can't hit Disneyland. Notice that it didn't change the top, and that's another interesting feature, and I'll, I'll let you a little, know a little bit about that right now. That's an A-B channel. So now I'm, list, now I'm monitoring the A channel. Go back to B. Notice how it didn't change the alpha for the A channel, just the B channel, and that's a part of the menu. We want to change A, go in here, like I did before, and I can switch between it. Let's do channel this time. Now it says channel 031. That's the memory slot. I don't really like that, so let's go back. Go back to frequency. Okay, so that's a bit of a pain to have to do that. I guess it's kind of interesting in that you could uh, do frequency on the A channel and uh, the alpha on the B channel. I guess that could be useful for some people, but uh, I find it is kind of a pain. I wish it was just a single button I could push to display the name like I can on my FT60 because that's what I'm used to. I think the value option on this radio is awesome. I think the price alone puts it in a solid buy category. When you factor in the controls, the actual operation of the radio, it feels pretty good. The physical assets on the radio, the buttons, all that good stuff. It has a nice great it has a nice size and the LED screen with the coloring is is handy. I like the AB channel function that you can monitor two channels at one time. Channel mode. 
and you can switch between the A and the B depending on what's active. Maybe you like to, uh, to monitor two repeaters at the same time that you can hear. I think that you have to have a upgraded antenna. In this case, this is the one that I recommend. The Nagoya NA701 makes it a whole lot easier to, uh, to both hit both dual, and, uh, dual band radio frequencies for different repeaters and, and all that good stuff. I recommend the AAA ad uh, battery adapter just in case you get stuck somewhere. You keep this in your bag and it's kind of like your backup. Last but not least, you have to have the programming cable. It is pretty much mandatory. The manual programming, which I'll make a video for in the future, is very, very difficult. There are videos on YouTube you can take a look at. I'll make one that hopefully covers it completely for both simplex and, and dual uh, repeaters and, and memory settings and all that good stuff. But in the meantime, really, go out and just buy the money and, and save your time. So the things I didn't like, obviously, is the programming, the manual programming. You pretty much require the programming cable. The second thing I don't like is the scanning the actual running through the scan function. It's extremely slow and it's either dictated based off of the stepping, and that's the frequency stepping. So in my example I showed you earlier, the 448.060, that's a, uh, a repeater we have local. If you don't have the stepping set correctly to catch that frequency, it'll scan right over the top of it. And part of the reason for that is because it takes a really long time to work through all the frequencies. If you're in channel mode, it's okay if you've programmed the radio, but it just takes a long time. So what I like to do is find a channel on your B channel or your A channel, switch over to the other channel, and then scan again and find something else. And then you can switch between them and then you're kind of like good to go hopefully for a while as long as you find something that, that works for the area you're in. Still, with all those things said, uh, $56 is basically $57 with, with everything included for all the stuff you're looking at. It's still a really good deal. I totally recommend it, and to get into ham radio, you really don't have a better option as far as I'm concerned. So go check it out, and uh, thanks a lot.